<laughs> Gideon, did you fall in here? <laughs> if we put goldfish in there or other fish, they compete with the wildlife for food. So, what do you got there? We've got a water boatman. Oh yeah. So they actually swim upside down. It basically turns upside down. <laughs> so a lot of people call the pond skaters on the surface. We're in Leeds, bringing you to see a custom wildlife pond. That would be Leeds, England. Ooh, a Tesla. Pretty nice. I like it already. And I'm Greg Whitsock the Pond Guy. This is my channel, Greg Whitsock the Pond Guy, and it's all about showcasing how people live the aquascape lifestyle. Let's check out another cool water feature. It's like education at home, right? That's right. And where's the frogs? So Mark, explain what you built here, buddy. We've got a custom wildlife pond. We've got an intake bay that basically sucks in the water and it's very gentle. So it's designed for the aquatic insects. This is a real dedicated wildlife pond. We've got two mystery waterfalls and we've also got some waterfall filtration over here with the bio falls and it's absolutely teeming with life. It's all about the balance, you know, as you can see there's a real good mixture of plants and that's what keeps the water clarity fantastic and it provides the food and shelter for all of the wildlife. We've got the bio falls on here, you can't really see it and it's because it's a sort of like a 360 degree angle, you can't see that there's a bio falls in there. So what people don't realize is that is the filter yeah so underneath there you can just see a little bit here that's the plastic of the filter but with the plants growing in it and it's foamed into place you don't really see it it disappears as part of it What was your goal to, you know, create something that could the whole family could interact with? Yeah, um, well, mainly wildlife, waterfalls, the noise, just something just m much more natural looking. What do people that come here say when they see this? Because it's not normal. They say it's fantastic. They say, how's the water so clear? So what is the maintenance, Simon, in involved with this? Nothing really at the moment, just scooping debris out from the intake bay. So Mark, how did you design this intake bay? Literally, it's a pump bolt and an aqua block. And what it does is it basically distributes the water over a bigger area. So there's not aggressive, sort of like six inch, it's spread over and it's literally simply water flowing in and it just circulates and it collects the leaves. So this is the sort of like the suction point. As you can see that there's a sort of like a current going in there. And you made it kind of wide because of the aquatic insects yeah. and other things, so, the newts and... So the newts can walk over the gravel and not get sucked in and being mm -hmm. filtered out where in a fish pond scenario, that's what you want. You want to, as soon as a fish defecate, it wants to be out of the system. But in a newt pond, snails, frog, all of the aquatic insects, they only want a gentle flow so they can walk over it. Now I'm seeing how grown in this, yep. this is. How many years has this been in the ground? Literally not even six months. <laughs> What are some of the plants that you put in here? So this is yellow flag iris, uh -huh. which is basically a native iris. Mm -hmm. We've got polypetala, which is a health of palustris. Marsh marigold, yeah, mm -hmm. we've got lots of irises. We've got pink ones, we've got reeds, we've got rushes, we've got equisetum, which was around before the dinosaurs. We've got lobelia, a few ornamental plants mixed in with the native plants for the wildlife. We've also got frog bit. As you can see, the very small plant on the surface is like a miniature water lily leaf. That's actually frog bit. It's a native plant floating plant and it creates that lovely raft. Bites the blanket weed for nutrients. So it's taking nutrients out of the water. We've also got Veronica Beckabunga or Brook Climb is the common name. And that's a great wetland filtration plant for the UK. So how long would a project like this be from any pond limited? And what would the investment be from a homeowner? So it's basically, it all depends on the custom wildlife ponds. You're looking at around about 20 to 25,000 for something like this. And it probably takes about a week just over a week sometimes it depends on where you are 
the access. That would include a skim cove, your bio falls, yep. the pump, the plumbing, the liner, the mystery underlayment, those two mystery waterfalls, little waterfalls. Yep. So for the whole kit and caboodle, whole twenty to twenty-five thousand dollar any pond unlimited investment. Yep. So Simon, what is this area right here? So this was um, a pond that looks a lot better than when I made it. <laughs> Mark renovated it. So when we moved in, we just had the old lower pond um, and I dug a new pond here, but it wasn't shelved, it was just a crater. Now it's just a separate unit. Yeah, yeah it's, now it's, it's a plant it's only pond. Yeah. It's really for wildlife, but there's no mechanization. It, and as you can tell, just slightly different, no movement, no sound. So Simon, now that you've lived with for this season, an aquascape wildlife pond, would you recommend this? to other families? Absolutely. It's just so much better than a traditional English pond. The water's clear, the maintenance is low, and it's just beautiful. And it's good for the kids as well. You know, who would want to take out a pond because it's an outdoor classroom? Jenny, how has this been for a mom with kids? Yeah, brilliant. The kids absolutely love it. I think everyone should have a pond. Brilliant. I'll give you a high five for that, sister. <laughs> What's so awesome is to see a young family live in the aquascape lifestyle. This is really cool. This is a little bit different. You know, this is a wildlife pond, no fish, but they really are in it for the insects and the snails, and it's a true education for this entire family. And to be able to turn an old concrete water feature into a beautiful aquascape ecosystem wildlife pond, it's just spectacular. Mark does great work out here. We need to get more people living the aquascape lifestyles. So what do we got here, Mark? So got a maiden head aquatic store basically a case of we've got some uh, preformed waterfalls and fish this is a typical aquatic outlet they still sell preformed tubs over here yeah huh? a lot of fiberglass ponds look at these are some good fish yeah some nice fish feed the fish that's a cool one we're in bad b this is a water feature we built in 2017 let's check this out So Mark, what was entailed with creating this? We've got an eight foot by 10 foot, 18 inch deep wildlife pond with an upgraded stream. So we've got a five foot stream. The cost wise for this sort of project is between eight to 10,000. emailed me and said we've got an emperor dragonfly flying around the wildlife pond which is fantastic because this pond is built purely for wildlife we've got a five foot stream we've got another micro falls at the top lots of submerged weed we've got a skimmer here again tucked out of the way again another number of different species of plants in here to keep really really good water clarity and the clarity on this pond is absolutely sublime no fish at all. It's, it's a wildlife completely pond. Completely dedicated for wildlife. If we put goldfish in there or other fish, they compete with the wildlife for food. A number of different types of submerged oxygenating wheat. Again, from the invert point of view, fantastic for damselflies, dragonflies, pond skaters or skimmers in America that go along the top. We've also got water boatmen, a number of great diving beetles in here as well. Like you were saying the other day, we've got a number of different caddisfly endemic to Northamptonshire. And what they actually do is they chew the rubber liner. So having rocks and gravel protecting the liner, ah. you stop that happening. Otherwise, mm -hmm. if you have a bear liner pond, the amount of bear liner pools that I go to and the caddis fly have actually put in microscopic holes and lacerations into the liner. So now when we build it with rocks and gravel, the caddis fly can latch onto the gravel and the rocks and it protects the liner and it, it just it works fantastic. And that is really clear water because it's a healthy yeah. ecosystem. And it's more for the birds. So I opened the water fort up to slow stuff down so we can have lots of robins and blue tits and everything. They come down, we've got a lot of wood pigeons again everywhere and they come and drink all the time and it is really, really good. The 
standard ecosystem pond. Skimmer on one yeah. side, bio falls up on the top, back and there. And again, really low maintenance. It's just like collecting the leaves. In the autumn, it's a little bit more work. Yeah, you're gonna have to come out here maybe once a week, maybe. It's weeks. like having somebody cut your lawn for you and you have to empty the bag, which is the box and the skimmer. Let me open it up and show you. So it's literally a case of take it out, tip it out. Yep, and you just empty the bag. There's a few water snails in there. So that's one of the reasons why I put intake bays on. Got these ramshorn snails. I don't know if you have these in America. Oh, yes. Got loads of little ramshorn snails. And sometimes, you know, we can collect these in the skimmer and we can just put them back in. Mm -hmm. No problem. So what we've got here is we've got a smooth newt larvae. Again, it has been hatched this year. And the female newts, they produce about 300 eggs a year. This particular one, the, the tail's been half chopped off. That's probably a damselfly or a dragonfly larvae in here. There's lots of dragonflies in here. What do you got there? We've got a water boatman. Oh, yeah. So they actually swim upside down. It basically turns upside down. <laughs> so a lot of people call the pond skaters on the surface. Yeah, we've got a lot of them on here. Yeah, loads. A lot of people call the skaters pond the boatman, but it's actually, this is a boatman that swims underneath where the skaters are on the surface film. And they've got a proboscis that basically eat the insects. And what they do is they suck the nutrients out of the insects. So sometimes you <laughs> might see a whole pile of 10 and they're on a hoverfly or something and they're all sucking the, the juices and stuff. It's great. <laughs> you see Mark getting geeked out and excited about this. I just like to say, build it and they will come. And I love the fact that there is a little newt in here. So that's exactly what customer wanted. They wanted a, a wildlife pond and they got it, right, Mark? Yeah, 100% and they're happy. What we like to say of a pond and right is it's beautiful, low maintenance, and enjoyable. And there's so many water features that can use the aquascape ecosystem approach that works with Mother Nature and not against it. Hey, if you're interested in actually having an aquascape ecosystem water feature, check out the link below to find a certified aquascape contractor near you. And if you're in England, I'm coming back here in December to teach a bunch of seminars with Mark so that we can get more contractors doing ponds done right, customer serve right, and building beautiful wildlife or ecosystem-based ponds. I love my art.